Hello viewers, I welcome you all to this talk on working of electron microscope. Electron microscope was invented by Ernst August Frederick Ruska. He was a German physicist, won the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1986 for his work in electron optics, including the design of this electron microscope. So the objective of today's talk is to learn the construction and working of an electron microscope. The learning outcomes will be that learners will be able to explain why electron beam is chosen instead of visible light for illuminating the object under study. They will be able to write the relation between resolving power of the microscope and wavelength of the light used. They narrate how to get thin beam of accelerated electron beam from an electron gun. They will be able to outline the functioning of electrostatic lengths and magnetic lengths. Finally, they will be able to describe the construction and working of an electron microscope. Electron microscope. Electron microscope is a device to magnify the image of minute objects. It is very much similar in construction to that of an optical microscope. The difference between electron microscope and optical microscope is that electron microscope uses a beam of accelerated electrons instead of light rays and an electrostatic field or magnetic field is used for focusing the electrons on the fluorescent screen instead of lenses principle. We know a particle of mass m moving with velocity v will always be associated with matter waves called de Broglie waves whose wavelength lambda is given by lambda equal to h by mv where h is Planck's constant m is mass of the electron v is the velocity with which electron is moving. The smallest distance between two points that can be just resolved by a microscope is given by delta x is approximately equal to lambda by 2 sin theta. We know the resolving power of an optical instrument is inversely proportional to the wavelength of the light used for illumination of the object. So resolving power is equal to 1 by delta x. So substituting this formula, we get 2 sin theta by lambda. This we find the solving power is inversely proportional to lambda. Now, when the electrons are accelerated to a potential of 60,000 volt, they have a wavelength 5 into 10 power minus 12 meter. We know lambda equal to h by mv. We know lambda equal to h by square root of 2me and lambda equal to h by square root of 2mev, where v is the potential difference. So suppose if you apply 60,000 volt, then using that formula when you calculate, you will find that wavelength becomes 5 into 10 power minus 12 meter. Now let us consider a mercury vapor lamp. The light from the mercury vapor lamp is very much closer to the visible light. The spectral lines of mercury light contains Vigier colors. For example, we choose the yellow line of mercury light. It is 5,782 into 10 power minus 10 meter. Now you write 5.782 into 10 cube into 10 power minus 10 meter. So approximately we can say 5 into 10 power minus 7 meter. This 1000 when we add here, it becomes 10 power minus 7 meter. Now you compare the wavelength of the electrons accelerated to 60,000 volt with the wavelength of the yellow line of the mercury light. 
almost this is giving 5 into 10 power minus 7 meter. Here 5 into 10 power minus 12 meter. When you compare both this data, you find that the wavelength of electrons is very, very smaller compared to the yellow line of the mercury light. We can say that when you compare, you find the electrons have wavelength 10 power 5 times shorter than the wavelength of yellow line of mercury light. Thus, the electron wavelength is 10 power 5 times shorter than the wavelength of the visible light. Thus, electron waves can be used to get high resolving power. In the formula, resolving power is two, equal to 2 sine theta by lambda. If the wavelength is very small, then the solving power of the instrument becomes very high. So this way, electron beam becomes superior to the visible light. It used electron beam for illumination and that way this microscope is named as electron microscope. A representation figure of electron microscope and optical microscope. The title itself tells that electron microscope uses a source of filament to get a beam of electrons. Whereas in normal optical microscope, we use a light source. So this is the first difference. Then in ordinary microscope, we use objective lens and the lenses in the eyepiece to get a magnified image, which can be seen by our eyes. Whereas in electron microscope, instead of lenses, we will be using coils carrying current, which behaves like a magnet. So a magnetic coil will act as a lens to focus. So here, instead of a set of lenses, we will be using a set of magnetic coils, which acts like a lens to get a magnified image and the magnified image can be projected on the screen or a photographic plate. This electron microscope, thus we can find it is having three essential parts. First is electron gun. The second is you have magnetic fields which can act as a lens. So from this point, we understand that you can use either magnetic fields or electric fields to act like a lens. And the third essential part is a fluorescent screen or a photographic plate. Let us now see how an electron microscope can be constructed. First, we must know how this electron gun is functioning. Electron gun has a filament. This filament is nothing but a tungsten filament. With the help of a low tension battery, the tungsten filament can be heated up due to thermionic emission. This tungsten filament emits electrons. And these emitted electrons, due to similar charges, they all will be repelling each other. So from the filament, the electrons will be diverged in all directions. So here we use a grid, which is not shown in the figure. A grid, which is also having connected to your negative potential. This grid will be having a pole. Now what happens? The electrons which are diverging in this direction will be now coming near the grid which is given a negative potential. So due to the negative potential, the electrons emitted from the filament cannot proceed in all directions. They have to come out of the grid only through a small hole. So by using a low tension battery, you make this tungsten filament to emit electrons. By using a grid connected to the negative potential, you get a fine pencil ray of electron beam. The grid has a hole. Only through the hole, the electrons can escape. And the grid plate will just ripple back all the diverging electrons and direct them in one direction. 
Now some slits are used. So you are getting a thin fine V after the slit. Now you connect a high tension battery between the filament and to this slit. Now when the electron beam is crossing the slit, it finds a high positive potential here. So they all get accelerated and through this hole, a fine accelerated electron beam will be coming out. This is the way electron gun is functioning. So the function of electron gun is to provide a fine pencil of electron beam. Here, a slow moving electron is emitted from the hot filament. The filament is surrounded by a metal cylinder, which is kept at a negative potential. The negative potential on this cylinder helps in stopping the spreading of the electrons from the filament and all will be collimated into a thin pencil of beam. The beam is then accelerated using a high tension battery with potential 60,000 volts. We know when electrons are moving with velocity, they will be associated with matter waves. When the velocity is very high and they will be associated with matter waves of short wavelength. Now we should generate matter waves of very short wavelength because resolving power of the microscope is inversely proportional to wavelength. How is it possible? We know lambda equal to h by mv. The formula is equal to lambda by square root of 2mqv. If v, the potential is very high, wavelength lambda becomes very, very small. So this way, by having a high tension battery of 60,000 volts, you will be able to generate electron beam having wavelength 5 into 10 power minus 12 meter. This is very essential to increase the resolving power as well as the magnification of the image produced by this microscope. Next, we will discuss the functioning of electrostatic field or magnetic field, how they act as a lens. Their function is to focus the electronic beam. Hence, the fields act as an electrostatic lens and magnetic lens. The lenses are described below. First, we will take the electrostatic lens. Actually, you are using electrostatic field, but it will function like a lens. So you call that electrostatic field as an electrostatic lens. We know that when a ray of light passes from one medium of refractive index to another medium of refractive index, its path is changed. Same way, an electron beam, when it passes from one electric field to another electric field, its path is changed. So this technique is used to focus the electron beam. The figure is shown below. You can see x x. They appear like a two parallel lines. Actually, it is a cylinder, cylindrical shape, one cylinder. And it is given a 300 volts potential. And we have another cylinder, y, y. That cylinder is given with potential 3000 volts. We know in electricity magnetism, you have studied from positive charge, the electric lines of poles will proceed to the negative charge. But here you have given 3000 volts and 300 volts. So you can say electric lines of poles will be proceeding from higher potential region to lower potential region. So from this upper end, the lines of poles will be proceeding in this direction. From the lower end of the cylinder, the electric lines of force will be proceeding. Now, this is from the electron gun. The electron beam, due to similar charge nature, they will be repelling. As a result, the electron beam gets diverged. Now, we need to make this beam to focus at a singular point. Here, if you keep object, the diverged beam goes means 
illumination will not be proper. So what you have to do by some technique, the diverse image should be brought to focus on the object so that perfectly the object can be illuminated. So now we are using two electrostatic fields and the electric lines of force will be proceeding from higher potential region to lower potential region. Now you see these electric lines of force cannot be seen but they will be proceeding like this. So the flux lines from the cylinder with higher potential will be rushing towards the cylinder with the lower potential. Now this electron beam has to travel in this direction. So when they get diverse, the incoming electric lines of force will apply a force. So these electron beam which is proceeding upward cannot succeed. They will be pushed downward. This beam proceeding in the downward direction due to the presence of this electric lines of force experience a force in the upward direction. As a result, the diverged electron beam will be brought to focus here. So this beam in the upper direction will be bent downward. The beam which is deviated in the downward direction will be experiencing a pressure in the upward direction. As a result, they will be coming into focus. This way, this electric field is used to focus the diverged electron beam to a single point. You can keep the object here and allow this electron beam to fall on it. Okay, so XX and YY are two cylinders. They are maintained at different potentials as shown in the figure. The electric lines of force between them are shown by the dotted lines. And here you have continuous lines. As the field potential is low, the equipotential lines are represented as short lines, curved lines. They are equipotential surfaces. As the potential on this cylinder is high, they are represented by large continuous curved lines. So you can see that the equipotential surfaces are different. You know what is equipotential surface? If you want to move a charge on this equipotential surface, you need not do any work. Or you can say all points on this curve will be at the same potential. That is what equipotential surface is. So the dotted lines represents the electric lines of force and the continuous line represents equipotential surface. The electron beam moving from the cylinder with the lower potential to the cylinder with higher potential gets converged. This way, the electrostatic field acts like an electrostatic lens. Next, let us see how a magnetic field would be working as a lens. Now, here you have a coil carrying current and it is enclosed in a cylinder and this cylinder has a hole. Same way, another coil carrying current is enclosed in an iron cylinder and this cylinder is also having a hole. You know, when current flows through the coil, it produces the magnetic field. You know, iron is magnetic in nature, so it will be able to hold all the magnetic flux lines. A magnet means it should have north pole and south pole. So you make the north pole having a coil carrying current in one direction and you make south pole by sending current in the opposite direction. So this coil carrying current enclosed in the iron box having a hole behaves one pole of the magnet and this behaves like another pole of the magnet. Now, from this, the magnetic flux lines will be rushing. And from here, the magnetic flux lines will be moving upward. Now, if the holes are not facing each other, they cannot focus the incoming diverged electron beam. But if the holes face opposite to each other, now the flux lines from this cylinder, suppose if it is a north pole, it will be rushing downward. And the magnetic flux lines from this 
south pole will be rushing in the opposite direction. Now you can see from the electron gun, you can see the electron gun is surrounded by a metal cylinder connected to negative potential and it has a hole. So from the filament when electrons are diverging out due to negative potential, they all will be repelled back and they are allowed to come out through this hole only. Now when they come out from this hole, due to similar nature of charges of all the electrons, they ripple one another and the electron beam is getting diverged. If this diverged electron beam is used, the object cannot be illuminated properly. So you have to convert this diverged electron beam into a converged electron beam and you can direct them on the object. The object gets nicely illuminated. So now when the diverging electron beam is rushing, the downcoming magnetic lines of force will push it downward and the downgoing diverged electron beam will be pushed upward. As a result, the diverged electron beam is brought to convergence and it will be focused. This way, these two points together act like a lens and you call this to the magnetic fields as a magnetic lens. An arrangement of magnetic coils used for converging electron beam is called a magnetic lens. So what is magnetic lens? An arrangement of magnetic coils used for converging the electron beam is called a magnetic lens. It is shown in this figure. The magnetic field is provided by these two coils C1 and C2 enclosed in two ion cases provided with holes in each ion case. When the holes face each other, the magnetic field in the space between the holes is used to produce convergence effect on the diverging electron beam. The focal length of such a magnetic lens depends upon the strength of the current in the coil. This way, you can even adjust the focal length of this magnetic lens by varying the current passing through the coils. This focusing is generally used in electron microscope. So you can use electrostatic field to do the focusing action or magnetic field to do the focusing action. But in general, we use magnetic fields in electron microscope to do this converging action. Now, let us explain how this electron microscope is functioning. You can see electron gun. From the electron gun, diverse electron rays are coming. Now, using two magnetic fields, which is acting as a magnetic lens, these diverse beams are made parallel. And you have kept the object here. The parallel electron beam is now falling on the object. The object scatters the electrons. So the scattered electrons will be focused here. The image of the object will be seen here. Using another pair of magnetic fields produces the first magnified image of the object. Then you use another pair of magnetic fields which act like a projector lens. This will magnify the image of the object further and the magnified image is falling on the fluorescent screen. When the electron beam strike the fluorescent screen, you can see the image on the screen. So instead of fluorescent screen, if you keep a photographic plate like X-ray film, the image is recorded there. The fluorescent screen is used to receive the magnified image of the very small object. The whole system, the electron gun, the magnetic field, and the fluorescent screen, everything is enclosed in a cylinder which is highly evacuated to have perfect vacuum inside. Why the cylinder to be vacuumized? If Air is present in the cylinder in which this arrangement is kept, then the air molecules can deviate the path of this incoming electron beam. 
So to avoid that, you keep entire setup inside the cylinder and completely you maintain vacuum within the cylinder. Now let us see the working. Already I explained an accelerated beam of electron is obtained from the electron gun. The beam is then focused with the help of condenser lens made to fall on the object. The object scatters electrons. The scattered electrons are brought to focus the image of the object using magnetic objective lens. So this is the first image of the object. Now using another pair of magnetic beams, you can still magnify the image of the object. The scattered electron traverse the magnetic objective lens and produces a first magnified image here. Then the electron again pass through the magnetic projector lens and produces the final image on the fluorescent screen of the photographic plate. This way, the electron microscope is working. Thus, this electron microscope finds a lot of applications. It is used in medical field, in hospitals to study the structure of the cells, the disease cells like uh, the tissue taken for biopsy and in chemistry, in physics and all. This electron microscope is used to study the structure of the substance, the size of the object, the crystal nature. Now let us do some problems. By solving the problems, our understanding of the working of electron microscope can be enhanced. The first problem is that what voltage must be applied to an electron microscope to produce electrons of wavelength 0.40 Armstrong unit? According to De Broglie concept, wavelength lambda equal to H by mv. H is Planck's constant, m is mass of the particle, v is the velocity with which the particle is moving. This same formula can be modified to lambda equal to h by square root of 2 mg, where e is the kinetic energy. Then for kinetic energy, if you substitute qv, lambda becomes equal to h by square root of 2 mqv. Now, now substitute the given data, the value of H, the value of M, the value of lambda. In this formula, you will be getting like this. Square on both sides and rearrange, you will be able to get the value of the potential. We need 934 volts to produce 0 0.40 into 10 power minus 10 meter. Let us discuss one more problem. In a microscope, photons are used to locate an electron in an atom within a distance of 0.1 Armstrong unit. What is the uncertainty in velocity? Mass of electron is 9.1 into 10 power minus 31 kg. We are very much familiar with uncertainty problems. Let us solve here. According to uncertainty principle, Uncertainty in momentum is given by delta P, which is equal to mass into delta V, which is given by H by delta X. We know the value of H, substitute here. We know delta X. Delta X is here nothing but the diameter of the atom. So you substitute, you are getting the value 6.6 .6 into 10 power minus 23 kg meter per second. So momentum is mass into velocity. Unit of mass is kg. Velocity is distance by time, so meter per second. Next part of the question is, what is the uncertainty in velocity? So you know uncertainty in velocity from this expression. Easily we can find out the uncertainty in the velocity of the electron given by delta V equal to this value divided by mass of the electron which is equal to 7.25 into 10 power 7 meter per second. Thus, you have found out what is uncertainty in momentum and uncertainty in velocity. I hope you enjoyed this learning of the construction and working of 
electron microscope which finds a lot of applications thank you